Hey gang, I'm Todd Schuhart with Razor Ridge Leads. I am so happy that you are here. I appreciate that. Uh, today's video is actually a role play with an agent. Um, we, we actually addressed quite a few sales and positioning issues in regards to life insurance, mortgage protection. So enjoy the video and please like and subscribe. Share if you feel inspired. Otherwise, without further ado, let's jump. <laughs> Man, that makes it even worse. Oh, wait, we're about to go live live. So I'm going to post <laughs> this in the group. Yeah. All right, let's see. We're going into public. The only thing better than making a fool of yourself is when you can do it in front of a lot of people. Listen, there is no other preferred way to make a fool of yourself than to do it in front of a bunch of other people. So get excited. It's good. Holy Kelly, what's shaking? Hello, hello. How you doing? I am good. Ordering some lunch after this and it'll be great, you know? Nice. What are we eating? Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. All right. Very good. What's your go-to at the Chick-fil-A? Uh, a number one deluxe with a diet of mini. It's a chicken sandwich, some cheese. Oh, I like it. There you go. Well, very cool. All right. So listen, we've got a special guest today, Mr. Randall. He's going to be, uh, we've been kind of working on some, some pitches here the last couple of, uh, Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. We... All right. Let me close that. So I'm not getting the feedback from the live. All right, cool. So Randall, can you share your screen or do I have to give you permission? Let's see. Um, let's see. Make host. Ooh. That could be all dangerous. Right. It's all you now, buddy. Change host. Here we go. That's a scary, scary thing. <laughs> it is a scary thing. So I want to kind of prefer it or, or kind of put a little bit of a, a story on this before we start. So Randall and I were chatting a couple of weeks ago. Um, he was... Uh, one of two that came to the call, uh, or were you on your own? That I think it was just me and you. It was a quiet yeah, day. Just me. Yeah. yeah, it was just just the two of us. And Randall was kind of experiencing, I think, similar things to what a lot of people do, and it's it's shiny object syndrome. Um, you know, this is the new script. This is the script I need. Uh, I'm going to try this script. So he was script jumping, which is normal. Um, and what we really worked on was landing on a script that really he just kind of resonated with him. Uh, but more importantly, we put it into a format that was more palatable for using. So you'll see as we go through this today, it's, uh, it is a, 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 a Gino script with a Randall twist. Uh, that's order that you're at the bar next time. Uh, that's a Gino script with Randall twist. That's my favorite new. It's, it's like a Tom Collins, but a Randallized. Uh, <laughs> and he's gone through and he's made a couple of edits here, a few different tie downs. So we're just going to role play. He's practiced this quite a bit. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll double back. This is only for the first call. So we're not going to really get into anything too crazy. But we're looking for flow and all that kind of fun stuff. And the reason that we did it this way is we really, um, Randall wanted to completely jump outside of his comfort zone. Um, and he has absolutely yeah. managed to do that here with us today. So thank you for doing that, Randall. I appreciate it. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> you don't sound too nervous, which is good. I'd rather go jump off a cliff, but that's okay. That's okay. Well, I'm glad you're here and not on the water's edge. That's really great. That's Thanks for, for making it in. So let's fire this off and then we'll open up and do some Q&A and kind of whatever anybody else needs, we can we can crack. So Randall, I will be your perfect customer today. Woohoo! <laughs> All righty. Then we'll go with this uh, little ring ring. Hello. Hey, Todd, this is Randy with Simmerich Financial. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Fine, I'm doing all right. It's a pretty good day. Real quick, I'm just following up on a request you made for life insurance. Now, just so you know, you're in the right place. You had said your hobby was skeet shooting. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Love to shoot the skeets. They don't shoot back. 
That's that's right. I do a little bit of that, although it's always embarrassing because my son outshoots me. So, well, somebody has to outshoot you. That's kind of how the whole thing works, right? (laughs) That's the idea. But I get to get a little bit in. I love it. So, let me ask, where are you? Where are you calling from today? I'm in uh, Greenville, South Carolina. South Carolina. I don't think I've ever been to South Carolina. Really? When I was a kid, we traveled a lot, but I can't remember going to South Carolina. Hmm. So. Let me ask you real quick. Um, most of the time when somebody's looking into life insurance, or at least frequently, I find that something's happened. Is there a particular reason why you decided now is the right time to look for life insurance? Um, you mean other than that I'm getting older by the minute? <laughs> well, we're all getting a little older. I uh, Actually, yeah, a friend of mine recently had a um, kid I went to high school with. Well, kid, man, I went to high school with, just passed away. Oh man, really I'm sorry to do that. Uh, yeah, it sucks. You know, we're getting to that age, so it just uh, it's time to uh, stop. I mean, I act like I'm 12, but it's probably time to stop doing that. So I thought maybe it was, you know, do some adult. Realize, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. That's hard. That is, I yeah. And I, and you're right. I've had a couple of friends pass away too in the last couple of years. It's not easy. Yeah. So, who are you looking to protect with this in particular? Um, my wife and kids, wife. the wife first, you know, cause that's how we what, do things. What's your wife's name? I don't have that here. Laura. Laura. Some thanks. So help me out, Todd. Have you looked into life insurance at all in the, la- in the past or was this something new? No, no, just, uh, just getting started here. Oh, okay. Were you looking for, did you know, were you looking for whole life or term life? Now, you know, whole life is, a lot of people call it permanent life. You can have it until you're 100 plus years old. It'll build up some cash value. Term life is more like renting it. You get a little bit larger face amount, but you get it for 10, maybe 20, maybe 30 years, literally. It's a term of that time. And then it goes, have you decided which way you're going with that? I don't know. I like the permanent thing you said. It makes it permanent, the whole life, more likely. Yeah. Okay. And are you looking for coverage just for yourself or other family members or? Um, I guess start with me and then let's see how it goes. And if everything's smooth, we'll uh, we'll we'll talk about everybody else. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. So listen, as a broker, I'm able to shop around 40 plus different insurance carriers so I can get the best options for your situation. Um, but life insurance is based on your health. So are you okay with answering a few medical questions? Sure. First off, I don't know. I don't have your birthday. Can I just get your birthday? Are you going to send me a present? I might. Okay. It's uh, January. I'm having to remember. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> uh, January 1st, 1900 and the 4073. 73. Yeah. Okay. We kind of got to know the right year there, I think, maybe. Yeah. I we don't want to tell anybody. That's what yeah, I, I try to hide. I try to when hide they, that. When they look at my ID and they go, oh, it's in the 1900s, they don't even have to do math anymore. So there we go. Well, I like it if they at least look at the ID. It's when they don't look at the ID and they just hand me the, the beer. It's like, <laughs> yeah. don't you want to card me? Man, yeah. I, I love it. <laughs> Can I get your height and weight? I am uh, five foot nine and 210 pounds. So let me ask, do you know of any medical history we should be aware of, like high blood pressure or diabetes or cancer? Uh, Nothing that that I've, nothing I'm medicated for. I did have some high blood pressure on my last uh, primary care physical thing that I had to do there. You know, your annual yeah okay they didn't put you on any medication Mm-mm, no oh, okay you would you would have to remember what the what it, what what the reading was would you yeah it was 142 over 86 86 okay but they weren't too worried about it they thought that was all right no no medication. yeah it's usually high when i go to the doctor yeah i understand that all too well <laughs> and you see they don't have you on any kind of medication at all no, I take uh, Zyrtec for allergies, but I buy that at the grocery store and a bunch of vitamins. That's about it. Okay. Okay. Now, they also will kind of look into your driving record here. You're not like a race car driver, are you? Do you have any speeding tickets in the last few years? <clears throat> no, I got a speeding ticket since I was probably 19. Oh, fantastic. 
Yeah, I had my first speeding ticket in 20 years, six months ago. <laughs> well, don't get insurance from what we're finding out. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't believe it. I was like, okay, I couldn't lie, I was speeding, so. Um, any DWIs or DUIs or anything like that? No, never. Oh, fantastic, okay. So, well, I sure appreciate all the information you gave me. It's going to take me about 30 minutes, maybe 60 minutes to look over the possibilities with the different insurance carriers. Um, is it better to call you back before five or after five? Uh, after is fine or better. After five? Yeah. Let me take a look here at my calendar. Are you, is six o'clock a good time? Will that work? Sure. Okay. Let me write that down. Um, what time did I say again? You said 7.30. <laughs> 7.30. Well, six o'clock. Six, okay, 6 o'clock. All right, 6 o'clock's good. You'll get a couple of text messages uh, confirming that time. If you do me a favor and confirm it, just so we know that uh, we're on the same page and we'll both be there at 6 o'clock. And uh, I'll tell you what kind of options we've come up with. Sounds great. All right, I'll see you at 6. Thanks. Bye. So a couple things. One is, first of all, Randall, like night and day from where you were two weeks ago. That's fantastic. You're smooth. I like it. You guys can see there's some changes in there from from some of the scripting that we have posted in the Razor group. Um, and and part of this was, you know, we we talked when Randall and I first were talking about this particular presentation trying to be somebody else's and you know i've had interesting conversations with other agents where they're like i'm giving my guys the scripts they're not getting the same conversions right and and huge takeaway you know so so what happens when we give someone our words and they don't work for them or what happens when we're using somebody's words and they're not working for us we don't own it yet it's really what it comes down to, right? It's it's about ownership. These have to be mine for me to be able to have the same sex, the same success or similar success as to the person that created the script. It, you know, a lot of this is belief, right? Gino does so well with his script because he believes that that's what's going to get him to the finish line. Therefore, the conviction in his words are different than somebody borrowing his conviction and trying to become him using his words. So how do we fix that? First is practice, right? It's a lot of practice. And it's not practicing in front of a client. It's practicing in front of a mirror. And Randall, you told me you felt kind of ridiculous doing that. And that is exactly what you should feel like. It should feel a little silly. But yeah, if I could add to, for me, one of the biggest ones was when I started recording myself. Mm, and listening. Listening to, listening to myself, I was like, holy crap, that's that's how I sound? Yeah, eye-opener, right? And mm. Randall, Randall even said it himself, he's a mellow guy. Like, you can see, he's pretty chill, right? He's I'm more of a, we all know I'm more of a spaz. If you spent three minutes with me and him, you could pick the spaz out. So for Randall, he had to dial it up. For me, I have to dial it down. Right. And that so so tonality is a big thing. And and how, what the reason I say a mirror is because we can use facial expressions to change tonality. Right. And as we're practicing with these things, we want to own these things, then we need to apply the tonality where we feel it belongs. The other thing that we did here that you'll see is Randall changed some stuff. So you know that one transition, Randall. Let's see which one are you talking about? That one things. right there. Has this anything probably... happened in your life to make this important to you? And that's not what he read. What he said, and I'm paraphrasing, was typically people don't look for life insurance just on a whim on a Monday. It's usually something's happened in their life in order to drive that uh, all of a sudden need to do it. Whether that's you just figured out you can use life insurance to protect your retirement or you're getting to that age where you're starting to lose friends or you've lost family or God forbid someone dear and near to you has gotten cancer and you're realizing that you better get your shit together because you're running out of time kind of a thing, right? 
it's a life event. A lot of this is driven by. So how do we draw the why out of somebody without going into this really long why rant, right? Because right now, I don't even know if I'm insurable. So we don't want to invest too much time there. The other thing is we don't want to lose them because we're trying to do something that other maybe they aren't ready for at this point in the conversation. So the way that Randall found his why is this. He he And he did this on off the cuff. We were talking and he's like, you know, people get insurance. And he said exactly what he said. I'm like, holy cow, that's how you pull your why. Me? I pull my why by asking one question. Randall, what was it that got you on the call with me today? What did you see in the ad that grabbed your attention? What's going on in your life? Talk to me a little bit. What, what are we dealing with? And I say it very similar to that, but almost different every time because I want it to be a little jumbly. I want it to sound like I'm just thinking of this now, right? And for Randall, this is his way of pulling that out of them. Well, what's going on? Well, let me tell you. The only thing I would have done differently is at that point is maybe spent just a couple of more minutes on the rapport side. I would have spent a couple more minutes on, on rapport with where I live. Only a minute yeah. or two, not a ton, right? Like Randall, whereabouts are you? I'm north of Denver. Oh, very cool. I used to live in Denver. Great time out there, man. It's uh, it's a fun. So you born and raised there? What's that? Born and raised? Are you born and raised in Denver? I wasn't born here, but I was raised here. Raised my kids here. Okay, so home. long enough to be home. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, what do you do out there? Any fun stuff? Are you a mountain climber or skier or skier? Nice. Whatever I can. <clears throat> that's cool. We had to leave Denver. I didn't ski and I didn't smoke weed, so we just uh, we came back to the Carolinas and and here we are. And ha ha ha. There's my joke, and now I've got my segue. So talk to me a little bit. What got you on the call with me today? What did, what did you see in the ad that grabbed your attention? And gang, you know, when leads come through, you see the little blips, right? But none of that's really important because it's not conversational. It's confrontational. Well, right here, it says you blah, blah, blah. Well, how'd you get that, right? And now we're explaining how we got this information and we've done one thing. Instead of taking the guard down, we've brought it up. Right. So I want to get you talking and and who do who likes to talk? What do we like to talk the best about? Anybody shout it out. What's our favorite subject? Our sales. Boom. And there it is. Right. And let them talk about themselves and get it drawn out of them. And then at any point in that conversation, if they say something that makes you go, huh? You dig in. If you're thinking, what does that mean? Dig in and ask. Even if it's something that they just do for a hobby. Well, I'm a uh I'm a skeet shooter and I only shoot with my middle toe. What? Tell me about that. Right. And now you've got just a couple of minutes to learn something. Next time you cross, come across a skeet shooter that shoots with their feet, you can go, oh, do you know Randall? Because odds are that's a small community. But you're building up your kind of your rapport building skills, right? So things to play with. I think you did great. How do you feel about it? Pretty good. I think like when you said, you know, it was your a friend. I, I should have asked just a little more about that. You know, just yeah. a tiny bit more, like you said, just to, to understand more of the, the relationship and, and and ask, you know, you know, if their family was OK or whatever. Just a little bit. Yeah, just a nugget or two. Just <clears throat> but also everybody here is staring at you and we all know you're going to we're watching to make sure you don't screw it up and that's nerve-wracking all by itself right it's really hard to be presenting something in a role play where everybody knows and is listening to every word because we know what every word should be i think you did great so thank you for doing that and uh congratulations because that is you, you crushed it so for everybody that's one call pitching the transition for you and the difference there would be you would move instead of saying, you know, I got to do a little work and get back to you. You would run right into what you're going to recommend if you're at that point in your field underwriting skills. If you're not at that, that point in your field underwriting skills, don't attempt it. Take the take the time back, right? Say, listen to exactly how Randall did it. I need a couple minutes to get some stuff together. I want to talk before or after five. And now you've got your lead back into the, into the thing. Does that make sense? Cool. All right, we'll open it up to some Q&A. What do we got cooking? Yeah, you, Kelly Bush said you did great. That was so great from 
my I'm gonna say your name wrong and I am not even gonna try. I and I was gonna say Mrs. and I'm not gonna get the last name right either. Holy cow, you got let's ready? Try. Are you ready? I'll help you. It's Mara. I was gonna say, is it Mara? And then Snagoski. Yeah, that would Snagoski. never have happened. But more <laughs> I would have gotten. And more I'm a shoe heart, sounds like Shukert. So I get the whole, but good for you. It took me like three months to even attempt to get her name right. <laughs> oh, I got I, this one I can do though. Sarah said, thank you. That was fantastic. Look at that. I nailed that one, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> so what are we working on, crew? What can we help with? Any suggestions to, to Randall? Any questions to Randall? Any questions for me? <laughs> um, I know I have some, some newbies on here. I have Mara, Christina, and Sarah are with me. And I'd say if you want to spend time on just the biggest difference between people that are used to working mortgage protection to then shifting to doing a general life approach. Yeah. Because like um, my, my whole agency has always done mortgage protection. I love it. So so play with me for a second. Mortgage protection is what? And it's, I want like life, the, it's life insurance. That's it right there. That's all it is, right? So what have we done to life insurance to make it mortgage protection? Just concentrated it, just on covering their loan. We spun it, right? We spun it into a different scenario. Could mortgage protection be bicycle protection? I mean, in theory, right? Yeah. Why not? It could be a fish aquarium protection. So I think that the first thing you got to realize is at the core, I don't care what protection it is, it's still life insurance right? So there's still a why, there's still a person that they care about. Does that mean that you can't position a general life lead to protect the mortgage? Not at all. Matter of fact, when Randall went through what whole life versus term was, on the term side, the only thing I would have added was, for instance, if you have a mortgage that let's say will be paid off in 20 years, the great spot for term insurance would be to do a 20 year term policy, right? And it kind of follows that, that whole trajectory of being able to protect the house. But gang, this is the why is the why, right? Now it's budget. I mean, think about it. We sell something that fortunately and unfortunately, we don't really have an ability to other than for health and the unforeseen that nobody really feels until it's happened to them. We don't have urgency, not real urgency, right? There's not like, there's only 10 policies left. You've got to get one of them. It doesn't really fly. So the why is really a big piece to this and who they're looking to protect. And the beauty to all of it is it's budget driven. What can you afford? Well, I've got 50 bucks a month then let's work it backwards and see what we can get you protected for. I want a million dollars. So do I. And so does everybody else. Can you afford a million dollars is a question. So the thing is with, with all of that, all the positioning pieces, never back yourself into the corner. When they say a million, you say perfect. Cause we don't know if it isn't yet. I want 10 million in, in coverage. I want you to have 10 million in coverage. That's fantastic. Just so you know, this is life insurance, so I do have a couple of health questions. You cool with me answering or asking those? Oh, fantastic. Do you smoke? How tall? How short? Right? All that kind of fun. And now where are we? We're in the process. Where aren't we? In a pissing match over here about how much coverage they're going to get. A million dollars? You're 82. Are you kidding? Doesn't matter. Absolutely. Let's see what we got. Because what's better than no coverage? Something. Coverage is better than no coverage. 100%. And if you absolutely believe that, then that's your spot. So mortgage protection is a spin on life insurance. So if you can if you can get that concept down and remove the mortgage protection piece from the conversation, you're right where you need to be, right? This is why suitability, matching those things together and, and paying attention to the field underwriting and writing the policy. I don't care what they're going to use the money for. If it's a mortgage protection policy, can they take the cash and go to the casino? Yep. Absolutely. Right. So it's not really mortgage protection, is it? No. 
It's life insurance. So that's the first thing I'd get around is that piece. Or like Mara said, she said her busy, bu biggest hesitation is if they don't know um, like what they need or how much coverage. Let's 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 just say that budget is just like they're loaded. Budget's not an issue. How do you guide them to the proper amount of coverage? Yeah. So this is a lot of questions then, right? So Mara, can you unmute? You're rich now, okay? Not yeah. the name rich. You can still stay more, but you're very wealthy. So talk to me. You're, you, you, you need, you don't know how much insurance you need. I get that. That happens quite a bit. So what's the house situation look like? Do you own the home or do you have a mortgage on it? We have a mortgage. And how long do you have left on the mortgage? 20 years. 20 years. And do you know what you owe on it? Uh, probably 575. 575. Cool. And the cars. Do you have a bunch of cars? Uh, we have a couple. Yeah. Are they paid for? Uh, all but one. All but one. What do you owe on that one? 40. 40. So we're at what? 6, 15-ish? Mm -hmm. Awesome. And then how about your income? What is your annual income? Just you. Uh, say 200,000. 200K. Okay, cool. So we want I'm to really riding this wealthy train here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to cover that. So depending on who you talk to, yeah, you're doing well. Um, uh, what, what do we say, Kelly, how many times the income multiplier do we typically look for? Like five to 10. Yeah. So now we know we need between one and $2 million just for the income piece, right? What else are you dealing with? Vacation homes, kids in school? How old are your kids? You have young kids? Young kids, so they're we've got a budget for for college and possible private school. I love it. So, are you you're saving for that currently? Uh yes. That's fantastic. Are you doing like a five two nine for the college? Is that what you guys are using? Yep. Awesome. And how long have you been doing that? Uh since they were born. So about five years. Fantastic. Um, now what we're doing is we're we're starting to really dig in and figure out where the suitability piece is, right? And the only way we're ever going to do that is to ask. Okay. I can't per, I can't more give you numbers that work for Christina on Sarah's numbers. I mean, it just it doesn't. If I don't know, it doesn't make any sense, right? So that's the first thing is is we always call it digging in, right? You're interviewing. And you're doing it conversationally. Oh, that's fantastic. Do you have a vacation home? Yeah, I've got one in Vail. Oh, Vail. Do you know Randall? He's a friend of mine out in, out in Colorado. He's a skier too. You had to have seen him. He wears that helmet with the goggles. It's just that kind of stuff, right? And you're, you're playing with that. And now we've got the number. Now we go to work. All right, well, let me go to work and put some options together and see what we can come back with. And you have everything you need to go and build that case. And then you call Kelly and you go, holy crap, I need a $10 million policy. What do I do now? <laughs> And everybody does a dance and we make it work and it's all good. <laughs> Thank but you. that's how I would do it. I would just dig in and ask those questions. Now, awesome. here's the thing. So there's a pop quiz for everybody listening. What did we just learn though in that process that we could cross sell or also present to, to, to Maura based on what she just told us? Okay. Oh, just, what? Well, First of all, if you got two kids, use a 529 plan. You could actually use a uh, universal life plan. IUL? Yeah, IUL on the kids and use that to fund their college uh, education later on. They have uh, some cars that have to be paid for sooner or later. And we need to find out what's their retirement plans. I mean, what's your exit plan for your job? Do they have retirement? Do they have some money saved up in a CD or 401k? You can move over to an annuity. Uh, yes. I was actually looking for that IUL answer, and you took it even farther. So you listened better than I did when I even made it up. I love it. Here's the thing I want you guys to think about, though. Right now, in the back of our mind, we have an IUL. Right. And and thanks to Jim, we also have an annuity hovering over here too. But why are they on the call right now? Right now they're on the call for an immediate need. So what don't we do on this call? We don't fight with them in the beginning about how much they want because we don't care yet because we don't know if they're even going to qualify for it. So some is better than none. We already agreed on that. 
The other thing we're not going to do is we're not going to distract them from their mission. Their mission is to get this peace taken care of. And we're going to do that because that's our job. We're going to circle back at policy delivery. We're going to make sure they got everything they have. They understand their policies. If you wrote with foresters as an example, they're going to know all the benefits that foresters gives them just for being a fraternal member. Because all that stuff's really cool and super important and helps with buyer's remorse and all the stuff that we have to manage. And then we're going to drop a little bit of a nugget. Hey, really quick, Maura, you said the other day when we were talking, you're doing 529s uh, for the kids for college, right? Yep. That's awesome. I commend you on that. Quick question for you. If I could show you how to not only pay for school, but also set them up with, say, a million or so in retirement, Without spending any more money, would that be something you'd be interested in hearing more about? I would be stupid not to hear that. You would be. And you're rich, so we know you're not stupid financially. <laughs> so we're going to make sure that that happens. And what do I have now? I either have an IUL opportunity or a reset for a subject matter expert. And you just did something. Oh, look at that. Do you guys have the new update for Apple? If you update your MacBook. It does all this stupid stuff now. Hang on, let's see if it'll do the... Hey, look at that. So it 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 allows you to double dip. So you, the biggest thing that we want to do to get a client isn't to hawk them a policy. It's to start building a portfolio of tools that they have, right? So you should be looking at that 2-4 cell training that we did and really think about how do you come back in and get another hook in, right? Every hook you get means that they're that they're they're tied to you that much tighter. The chances of an agent coming in and taking them from you because they saved them three dollars a month in premium is off the table, right? And the ultimate goal and the ultimate kind of grade on that is when you get the call and say, "And this agent just called me and told me that." Uh, you know, if I get their policy, every time I flush the toilet, gold coins will fall out of the bottom. And you go, oh, I have that policy too. And they're great. Great. I love you. I'm doing it with you. Right. And so that's how we keep them and turn them into actually clients. It's how a book of business becomes your book and not just another person that you hocked a policy to three years ago and has never heard from you again. So some cool stuff to consider and think about. But I love that question. And that was a really long winded answer. So I dare you to ask another. <laughs> I mean, you know me. I'll keep asking. Oh, um, no. How about the newbies? Um, for the newbies, the um, the the shopping objection. Like, oh, I'm just I'm just looking for quotes. I'm just yeah, that's cool. I, I love that. What have you seen so far? Yeah. Right. I've seen. I've seen. You know. I've seen I can get $2 million for $20. No kidding. Is that term or whole life? Oh, they said it was term. They did. Who are they? Um, I don't remember. Uh, I've dealt with those guys before, too. So listen, I just a really simple question, right? Clearly, there was something there that didn't make sense to you. Otherwise, you and I wouldn't be talking. You'd have $20 a month for $2 million in coverage. Why are you here? Listen, sales to me isn't about tricking. It's not about dancing with words around somebody. Now, it is a lot of times it's it's how we say what we say. So tonality and things along those lines. But the easiest path to the question or the answer you know most of the time is a straight line. Right? We, we do all this like sidestep, rebuttal, close, boom, bang. No. If I'm taught, if you're talking to your children, everybody here have kids? You're talking to your kids, they come home from school and they smell like cigarettes and you go, were you smoking? And they go, no. Are you done with it? No. You're chasing them around, sniffing them even more, right? Something's going on. Give me your breath. Let me smell your fingers. Who are you hanging out with? We have all these very direct and pointed questions all of a sudden with no fear. It's the same thing. When you're on a sales call and somebody says something stupid, you should go, I need a little more on that. What does that mean? Not I need a little more on, more on that. There's a little separation there. But for Kelly, I would, that's it. Talk to, well, that's cool. I love that you're shopping around for quotes. What what have you seen so far? 
okay, great. What are you still looking for? Like, that sounds like a great deal. Why didn't you take it? And then you find out, oh, well, they won't take me. Oh, why not? I grew a third leg and I'm in the middle of chemo, but I forgot to tell them about the leg, right? Whatever it might be, it's that type of thing. So it's, these are dig in opportunities. And we do that by asking questions. And then if the reason's really stupid, <laughs> some people we just can't help, right? Like we can't fix that. There's nothing we can do for that. <laughs> but knowing is what we want. What else you got, Kelly Bush? <laughs> what else you want to do? I feel like I was in your OG group. I remember how you used to run these calls. <laughs> hey now. We did our little thing on the front. Uh, Maura got one thing out of this whole call, and that's can't fix stupid. So that is fantastic. We'll build on that next week. <laughs> no, that's good. Listen, here's the thing. Sales, to me, gets very complicated if we let it. Truthfully, if you strip it all down to its core, it's just having a conversation with somebody. So when you have a conversation with somebody, what are you doing? You're speaking, they're speaking. When they're speaking, you're listening. You're not thinking about what you're going to say next because it's on your script. You're reacting to what they're saying. And if what they're saying doesn't make sense, then we do what we do in any other conversation. Huh? I need a few more on that. Tell me a little bit more. What did you mean when you said... Why is it that you didn't go with that $2 million uh, policy for $20 a month? That sounds like a screaming deal. Why is it you can't remember the name of that company? Right? It's like, so you can't lose something that you don't have. And right now you don't have a deal. There's nothing to lose. You're trying to figure out if you have an opportunity there to take a client on. You're interviewing them, they're interviewing you. Don't forget that you get a you you have a chair at the interview table. So have a conversation, listen to what they're saying, know where you want to go, drive the conversation there. But don't lose focus on on that connection with that person because your top closers, your top performers are quick at breaking down this and keeping the guard down by being conversational and, and listening to what people are saying. And if you don't know the answer, it's okay. Because nobody wants you to make it up. I'd rather you go figure it out and come back and tell me. You know, that's really unique. I haven't come across that before. Here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to call my underwriter. I'm going to answer, get an answer on that. But before we go today, let me ask you a couple more questions in case there's anything else I need to get. Talk to me a little bit about X, Y, and Z. And then you end the call, you go do your homework, you come back at the time you have, hey, great news. I wasn't able to get you $2 million for 20 bucks, but here's what I can do. Based on your third leg and your current diagnosis, here's what I've got for three-legged people. And you start running through the thing. So all I need now is to get your application started. And Kelly, the hardest part that I find for folks is uh, them telling me the name, address, and phone number of their doctor. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull up the application while I'm doing that. You go get that information. I'll meet you back here in a minute or two. Does that sound good? We're in it. I didn't hesitate. I didn't stop. I didn't think. Natural progression of the conversation led me here. So I took the opportunity. And you're going to feel antsy and anxious doing it. Don't worry about it. Just run with it. Folks, that right there was gold. That was like you said, Todd, people, all right, I got to sell, but now how do I get to the application? That's going right there, folks. Repeat that, Todd, for those who missed it, and we're doing something else. <laughs> yeah, so it's really simple. What I find is the hardest part for people is that they uh, they can't remember their name, address, and phone number of their doctor. So here's what I'm doing. I'm going to pull up the application while I'm doing that. You get that information. I'll meet you back here in a minute or two, and we'll get this started. And that's when they're going to give you any book, any blowback. Yeah. But chances are they won't because okay, yeah, this guy sounds legit. He he got he asked what I want. The price sounds good. I'm gonna go with this guy. That's that's golden, folks. Right there is golden. 
And the beauty to it is if if you miss the boat, they're going to hesitate. And then what's the easiest rebuttal to figure out what's keeping them from hesitating? It's really simple. You ready? Listen, when we get to this point and, and somebody still is kind of apprehensive like you are, and I get it, it happens. It's because I didn't explain something. What did I miss? Because I don't want you to go on to the next guy to say, oh, I got quoted $2 million for eight bucks. And I can't remember that guy's name either. Right? Like this, this cycle has to stop. We all use the same company. So what is it that I missed explaining? How can I help you better today? And what is that? That's not this crazy word track that you've got to memorize. It's your version of cutting straight through, right? Straight line. Just take me right through the middle of that thing. What did I miss? How can I help you better? I didn't explain something and I apologize for that. Make me better for you. What can I do? And just ask them, right? And sometimes just the fact that you humanized it is enough for the trust to kick up a notch or two. And they can start to ask you some things, right? Well, I didn't want to tell you but I've had X, Y, and Z happen. I understand that. And I feel bad for it or whatever the reason is, right? Let me see what I can do to work around that with the carriers. If I can find something and I feel like we can get through underwriting, would you like to move forward? Absolutely. Perfect. I've got what I need. I'll do a little homework. I'll be whatever it is, right? You're just being human. That's it. Every time. It'll get you there. And if you sing, it's even better, especially if you can't sing. People love that. Uh, The other trick for the new people, there's a, a really cool Google Chrome plugin called Crank Wheel. And if you're not using Crank Wheel, you should get it and you should figure it out. It is super, super simple. The thing I love about Crank Wheel is you click it open on your computer screen. You send them a link they t- and it texts it to them. They open that link and they're on your screen. And guess what's on your screen when they open the link? The application. And guess who gets the social security numbers and everything we need without any objection? Anybody that is showing the application, right? Because now it's, I'm not asking for this. This is, you can clearly see this says Washington Mutual. Tell me, uh, now I need your social security number because that's the next question on the application. You can see it here. And it's great because I've never lost in this business a deal to getting a social security number or a date of birth. Crank wheel, correct. And it is a Google Chrome plugin. And if you don't know Google Chrome plugins, just Google, Google, Google Chrome plugins. It's really pretty simple to use. And I believe it's, there's a free and a paid version. Um, I'm not sure if they still have it, but if you go to a website called app, A-P-P, Sumo, S-U-M-O, you may be able to still buy a lifetime license to the crank wheel. Um, That's where I got mine. It was like 60 bucks and I never paid again, which is kind of nice. So I don't yeah, know. That's, and that's what I got. I don't know if it's still there for the deal, but. But check. But Crank Wheel Where is, is it at again? Sumo? App, A-P-P, Sumo, A-S-U-M-O, App Sumo. Be careful on App Sumo if you like softwares. You will, you'll, you won't even know it. 10 bucks, 20 bucks, $3,000 later, you're checking out. And I can't go there anymore without my, uh, without my sponsor. <laughs> I buy too much stuff. So something to look into. Um, how about the objection? Um, cause we've started the conversation via switchboard. We've gotten the conversation going. We're booking the appointment. Oh, Todd, just, can you just, can you just email it to me? Absolutely. So here's what we do, because really everything has to go through the underwriter, right? Kelly, because remember, this is life insurance, so it's it's all health-based. So we do have to get those approvals. The way my process works is really simple. We do the application today. It takes about 15 minutes. I actually am pulling that up as we're chatting, so we will be ready to go. From there, we're going to submit that to the underwriter. Once we do that, I'm going to send you everything over for your review while it's in underwriting. And then after the policy issues, you and I are going to get together and I'm going to walk you through your policy. And gang, if you're not doing policy reviews, you are missing so many opportunities to grow your business. The first is you're missing an opportunity to control your chargeback rates. Hey, I just got life insurance. From who? I don't know. Somebody called me on the interweb. My brother sells it. 
Oh, have them call me. Hey, what'd you get? I'm not sure, but it was like that. Oh, well, I can get it. For, oh, that's less. I'll get that one. And now you got canceled. And you're going, oh, I did all that work. Mm, too bad. All right. Pound salt. So how do we keep that? How do we keep buyer's remorse? And how do we make sure they understand what they have? We do, we do a policy review. So then, Kelly, what we'll do is a policy review call. I'll answer any questions you have. We'll go through your policy in detail. Talk about all the other benefits that come with it so you know exactly what you have. Um, and that's really it. So listen, here's the thing. It takes me, again, about 15 minutes to do this. It's very quick. Uh, what I do find is the biggest hangup for folks is who their doctor is and where they're located in phone number. So while I pull this up and put in my information, if you could grab that, I'll meet you back here in just a minute. And I just texted you a link to your cell phone. If you want to click that, we can do the application together online. Does that sound good? And if Kelly still tells me no, then here's where I'm at. Okay, listen, I can make your email box look like the the library at the chamber of, or at the chamber of commerce. What is it exactly that you need to see to help you make a decision today? Because I feel like I've done you a disservice. Like I didn't explain something correct. So what did I miss, or where where can I can I give you the detail that you need? And I'll be more than happy to back it up with email after. But what do we got, Kel? Well, talk to me a little bit. And you want to draw it out of them because a lot of times I always equate this back to shopping at the mall. You ever go to the mall? Anybody ever been to the mall? You ever walk into a clothing store and somebody with, you know, who, who just got their, their, their work permit is screaming, can I help you? And what do we all say? Nobody says, oh my God, yes, I'm going to get in the dressing room and get naked. You keep throwing clothes over the top, right? No, we all say, I'm all set. I'm just looking. And then 20 minutes, 30 minutes later, we do leave with a bag of stuff. So our initial knee-jerk reaction is, stop, get on my face. But later when I can't find the size that I need, you all of a sudden have more value. I actually didn't mean I'm not buying anything. It just means give me some room to breathe. And you'll see this a lot with digital leads. Text message goes, lead comes into switchboard, text message, first one goes out, stop. What happened? This lead sucks. No, it doesn't. They're being people. Stop. They just need a little room. So what do we do in those cases? We don't write the lead off. We call them. Hey, just real quick. So they said, stop the text message. This is who I am. I don't want to drive you crazy, but I also want to make sure that we get you the coverage you need. So is there a good time we can chat? And you play that respect their time thing, but I just wanted to get in really quick to make sure you understood. So if you can hit start again or say start back to that text message, I can send you over some information. We can get a book, you know, we get a time booked and, and get your family protected. That sound good? Yeah, oh, perfect. And then that turns into other things and you write the policy and everything's great. What about taking that objection all the way back to just booking that initial appointment of you ran through the conversation on switchboard, gotten all your initial information, you're trying to book that appointment and they're balking and saying, just email me. Yeah, fantastic. What would you like me to email you? Uh, just email me over the quotes. Oh, cool. Okay, so I would love to do that. And that is absolutely something we can do. I do need about seven minutes, though, to ask you some questions, because as you know, we're going back now. Now we're we're kind of punching them a little with the as you know, because they already know everything clearly, right? This is a know it all. So as you know, this is life insurance. So I do have a few medical questions that I need to ask you. So we can do that via text message or I can call you for seriously seven minutes. Which one do you prefer? So we acknowledge it. Here's my mission. Here's why. What do you want to do? What do you want to okay. do, Kelly? Let's, we can just text. We'll just text the questions. Fantastic. Here's what I need to know. Blah, 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 blah. Right? Okay. And so now you. we've done all that. And then um, you're like, okay, I'm going to go research, do, you know, blah, blah, the whole spiel. Um, when is a good time for us to go over your options before or after five today, tomorrow, whatever your line is. And they, and then they don't answer and they just say, just email me quotes. Yeah. I'd love to do that. Have you gotten quotes before? No, never, never, not once. That is amazing. So let me tell you how it works. We're going to get together. I'm going to walk you through your options again, quick phone call. And then I'll follow that up with an email, but I have to walk you through these because otherwise it's just not going to make sense. And here's the deal. If you don't like that, 
pound salt. I don't care. Because whose sandbox are they entering? Mine. My sandbox has rules. And if you want to play in my sandbox, you play by my rules. Or you take your little bucket and you go home. And that's all there is to it. And we draw that line in the sand. And I promise you, when you have that positioning, you've given yourself, you've presented with some authority. And it will work. It's not going to work 100% of the time, but it'll work when it needs to. And I and I also will tell you the folks that won't spend seven minutes with you on the phone are not going to be good clients. You're going to get a chargeback or they're just going to be that extra special pain in the you know where that nobody really wants anyways, right? So not everything is winnable, but I, I challenge, and everything Kelly's asking me, it's just off of the whim of a conversation, right? It's It's, I'm playing now. Guys and girls, this is a game, right? Sales is a game. We're just playing a game. That's all we're doing. That's it. So you just keep asking and you keep coming back to the same thing as long as it ends at the same thing. So uh, one of my, I think one of my favorite trainers is Jordan Belford, who is the Wolf of Wall Street. Um, the thing, and he is not the inventor of his sales process. He He wants to say he is, but he's not. Sales is sales is sales. The one thing that Jordan has done, though, is that he's brought in a lot of things and simplified them down to one pretty core concept, and that's the straight line. This is the straight line. Call starts here. Sale happens here. Everything in between drives to that line. If we get off the line, it's because you brought me off the line. Kelly brought me off the line. She asked me a question. In, in some sales trainings, this is called sidestep. Rebuttal. We've heard a rebuttal. And then close, meaning getting back on the line, getting back to where we left off and what we were trying to do, our sandbox. We're getting back to our rules. So if you want to pull me over here, that's cool. I'm going to answer that question, then I'm going to drive back here because we're headed this way. We're not going over here, right? And if they want to go over there, they're more than welcome to, but our sandbox doesn't have wheels, so we'll see you later, right? It's that simple, and it's your mindset of doing that. It's how do I get back to the line? And I get back to the line because I want to get back to where I was. So Kelly, that's a great question. I will absolutely email. I will blow your email box up. I promise I got more stuff than you can read. If that was what makes you happy, I want you happy. Before I can do that though, here's the process, right? First, we're going to do the application because I got to get the underwriter to approve it. But before I can do the application, I got to understand where your health is because this is life insurance and it's health-based. So I have five to six questions. It only take me a couple minutes. You want to do it on text or phone call? Phone call. Great. Here's what I need. And while we're talking, if I'm really good at it, I got some opportunities for you, Kelly. Oh, that's interesting. Here's what we can do. Now I can field underwrite right on the spot if I can. If I can't, I'm going to do a little work and put some proposals together for you. I need about a half hour to do that. You want to talk before or after five today? You want to talk before or after five tomorrow? If you're going to throw that line out there, make sure your calendars, <laughs> you have the availability. Oh, five. Oh, shit. Uh, tomorrow, right? So you want to make sure that you got it on point. Does that make sense? And there are so many fancy sales trainings out there. Mm -hmm. There's spin selling, there's NEPQ selling, there's ABC LMNOP, there's something else that I'm sure I've never heard of, but it's all at the core of the exact same thing. And guys and girls, this is conversation, relationship, talking. It's the same things you would do with your kids, the same thing you do if anybody here has ever dated or ever been married, or ever been intimately involved with anybody that's reciprocated, right? It's it's this it's interacting with people. The end results are different, but the path to getting there and building relationships are the same. Cool. Well, <clears throat> yeah, I would like to work more, like you said, when we have time on uh, the one call. The one call. Yeah, transfer. I like. You know, I'm sure you know we've got that new platform now. We've got four different carriers on that platform at one time. But they do ask a fair amount more medical questions prior to your quoting. Um, so I'm trying to figure out the smoothest way to make that happen. So, Randall, I just texted you over a link. If you can click that for me, I didn't really. But if you can click that for me, what I want to do is I want to walk you through the medical questions that we need, right? And now you're open and you've got all your stuff up. Can you show that screen? I don't know the, the platform. Can you show that to a client or does it look just so like? Um, I don't... It looks pretty professional. You can show it. 
Yeah, so that's, that's what a, I would do. I'd crack it open and say, okay. And I just ask the questions on the screen because how do we get social security numbers out of resistance? We blame it on the system. How do we get more medical questions answered where you don't sound like a complete pain in the ass? We blame it on the system, right? Oh, here's the system. Here's what I need. Pull the quotes up in front of them. If it looks good, who cares? Well, the yeah, that's system. You qualify for. Randall, which one you want, A, B, or D? Yeah. I do like, like I said, I like the system in terms of the fact now that we've got four different carriers in there for the term <clears throat> and two for whole life. So that's kind of nice. And they're trying to build on that. Plus, but they've got my favorite in there anyway, you know, SBLI for healthy, healthy people. And and uh, they got Foresters in there and Mutual of Omaha now. So. Perfect. Yeah, so in, like I said, if I can streamline this and and get what they want and what they need and do it in one call, better for them, better for me. Mm -hmm. 100%. Listen, gang, everybody's goal, you should you really want to develop your field underwriting skills where you can troubleshoot 90% of the time on the call and get the policy done. Because you know that three days from now, you're going to schedule your policy delivery call and you're going to reinforce what they purchased. You're going to get rid of buyer's remorse. You're going to prospect for referrals. You're going to do all kinds of wonderful things there. So the, the ultimate goal and the people that you see that work digital leads the best can field underwrite and do the intro call all and take the application all on one call. And truthfully, unless you're doing IULs or tax tax free stuff or DFL, this isn't. This shouldn't be a two or three call close the majority of the time. There's always an exception to the rule, but the rule really should be closer to one call. You should be trying to get to a one call pitch to the application right then and there. For new folks, though, that's not possible. And no offense to anybody, but holy cow, when they said you're drinking from a fire hose, I think they forgot to put the hose on there. It's just hitting you from the damn fountain coming out of the ground. There's so much. We thought licensing was it. <laughs> How, no, that's nothing. You've got systems now. You've got carriers. You've got, what's a field under a guide? Come on, really? There's so much. So you have to develop these skills over time. I challenge you, though, as you start to hear things repeatedly, that it leads you to the spot where you're going to go, this isn't actually all that hard. And that's when you know you're where you need to be to be able to one call pitch and close these guys. So, But you have to work your way up there. So I love that the platform has four carriers on there. It takes all the guesswork out. I get why they did that. I would use that to your advantage because that is, sounds like it's a tool, right? So use Crankwheel, get them on your screen, ask them the questions that are right there. Let's see what results come up. And if nothing does, great. Guess what I have to do? Some work. Want me to call you before or after five? We're right back to where we were. The only difference is now I've got all this damn medical information. I could actually go put some stuff together. Right. If it doesn't match the four carriers that are on that platform, don't give us the solution that we need. It's always moving back to the line every single time. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that's, I guess for me, that's what I'm thinking about now in terms of logistics is just, I start asking those questions. I can either go ahead and get into that platform before I start asking and start asking and put them into that you know, into there right away, or, or I end up double, you know, messing with it, trying to write it down twice or whatever. Um, I just want to make sure I'm not wasting their time and, and because they'll get, eventually they get frustrated. It's like, oh, all right, let's, let's make this quick. So, so when you guys do that in the new platform, does it set up a, a lead card or anything? Like, can you save that info for that person? Yeah, that, that is kind of nice. Yeah. Um, here, let me see. My one my one tip of advice to you, Randall, would be to if if you're worried about it being more questions because it's a very detailed quote tool, is know it like the back of your hand. So that way if you're just on the phone getting the information, you know exactly what you need to ask because it's the same questions, you know. Yeah, just some of them are a little more detailed is all. Yeah, just just getting the it's the same follow-up questions that you'd be asking just know it like the back of your hand so you can go put it in quickly yeah because then you go through all this 
So how easy is it to convert this into an application? Pretty simple. Depends on the carrier. Okay. Um, some of them, they're, they're trying to get it so it happens right here on the platform. Yeah. But um, a couple of the carriers, you end up going, and that's, that's why you end up, uh, you know, double asking the question. You end up um, going through all that to get the quote. But then you got to go into the application. Well, now you got to ask the same questions over, except more deep, you know, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> they're trying to fix that so that it goes straight to the app, and that's obviously going to be incredibly nice. Yeah. Well, that's cool. So it sounds like it's a work in progress. So at this point, though, just get comfortable with the with the system. Use Crankwheel; it's a great tool. Bring them into the platform and work it with them. Right. That's all I would say. Gang. At the top of the hour, I appreciate you all. I'm going to go get my eyes dilated because I'm going blind and need new glasses. So that's fun for getting old. Uh, if anybody needs anything, join us in the Razor Ridge group. Ask questions. We're here. Uh, look forward to seeing you all next week. Kelly, I think I'll see you this weekend. Is that right? Yep. Sunday. I'll send you a link. And I'll remember how to pronounce Maura's name and nail it like uh, nobody knows. And we'll just do that. And then Christina and Sarah, I'll mess yours up just because that would be funny. Other than that, gang, Randall, you killed it today, brother. Thank you for doing that. Your tonality well, was great. Your flow was good. It was really good. You did really good. I, I appreciate your guidance a lot. Thanks. Anytime. Jim, you saw insights nobody else did. I appreciate that too. So thank you all for being here. And uh, have a killer rest of the week. I wonder if this does anything with the Google. What does this do? If you just do two fingers, I get balloons. Yeah. If you do four fingers, you get confetti. Be careful what fingers you put up. Well, this one doesn't do anything. I've tried multiple times. <laughs> this one does this rock and roll. Oh, that's pretty. I don't cool. think I love you does anything other than get you in trouble with your wife. Yeah, <laughs> nothing. Anyways, that's it. Thanks, guys. <laughs>